Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and today is Saturday, January 16th. I would like to talk to you a little bit about today, a little bit today about um, what's been going on with my week this last week. I have done something that I've been wanting to do for the last like year and a half. Um, just as of yesterday, it's something that I've been thinking about on and off. I started a membership with a website that does virtual races and I signed up for a race. Um, the race is called, I think it's called Happy New Year 2021 and it's on yes.fit.com. It's essentially called YesFit, I guess. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm getting a little awkward right now because I'm trying to film and kind of do the one go thing even though we do have the editing equipment on the computer so I'm thinking that maybe I'll be able to edit some of this out but anyway um so uh the virtual race that I signed up for is a 32 mile race and the neat thing about it is that you can um you can bike you can swim you can walk or run to complete these races and it is there's no time frame that you have to get it done in. You basically go at your own pace. So you can like log like a mile today and three miles tomorrow if you walked it, if you ran it, if you swam it or if you um, biked it, whatever. But anyway, uh, that is something that I did. So I'm working towards that. Uh, today would actually be the very first day that I'm going running. I'm a little bit apprehensive about running because I haven't gone for a run since October 5th of 2020. So it has been three months, if I'm not mistaken, um, since I've actually gone to run. And it's kind of a little bit sad for me because I was so into running. I hope I'm not yelling at you, by the way. I'm across the room to give you kind of a full body shot of me. Uh, that way you can see a couple of things that I'm gonna talk about. But anyway, um, blah. So, um, it's a little bit sad that I haven't run in so long because I really had dedicated myself to it for a long time. I, um, I started, um, getting serious about my health in July, on July 8th of 2018. And I have like progressively made a lot of different, um, I've uh, progressively taken a lot of steps to achieving different fitness goals. Um, some of them are as simple as um, reaching down and touching my toes without bending my knees, reaching down and touching the floor, laying my hands flat on the floor. Some of them have been, um, some of the successes, successes that I've had have been uh, very, um, very things that some people I don't think would notice unless you've been through it yourself, things that, um, I don't want to say that other people take for granted, just things that are easier for other people to do. Um, but when you're, when you're out of shape and or like morbidly obese, because I think that I technically qualify for that category whenever I started my journey and I was at 281.2 pounds whenever I started this journey and got very serious about it. Um, things that I could do or couldn't do then that I could do now. Uh, and I could go on and on about different things, but one of the things was being able to tie your shoes with your knee on the inside crook of your elbow instead of being out of your elbow, or even being able to reach down and tie your shoes at all, depending on your flexibility level, um, and uh, and like how how really how big you are if you can reach okay. And so um, there have been little successes, there have been great successes. Um, one of my greater successes for myself was that um, I wanted to work my way up to being a jogger and It was something that I've been wanting to do since sometime in high school I just thought it would be really cool to be a runner or a jogger and go out and run and everything I just it was something that I wanted but different things held me back and I feel like primarily my mentality held me back um, I'm asthmatic I do carry an inhaler with me like everywhere that I go it doesn't matter if I'm go grocery shopping or if I'm, I'm at work or if I am um, going for a run or if I'm at the gym, whatever. This is usually in my pocket if I have pockets. If it's not in my pocket, it's in my purse because that usually comes with me. Um, but anyway, or it's next to me because I need it out of my pocket so it doesn't fall out of my pocket while I'm working out or whatever the case. So anyway, um, I will uh, <laughs> touch on that in a second here. Um, in fact, I'll touch on it right now. My mom was really concerned about me and my asthma back when I was in high school, and I wanted to be in the marching band. I already played the violin, but I had some friends 
who were in band and I wanted to be in the marching band with them. Plus I really thought the band was cool. Um, I always thought that the drum line was like the coolest thing ever. I love the beat and everything, the rhythm. Um, it was just really cool. And I wanted to kind of be a part of that. And, um, one of the things that held me back was my mom's concern for me having asthma attacks. Um, I don't remember the last time I had a full fledged asthma attack, uh, but she was concerned about that. And so she didn't really want me to join marching band and, I feel like that was part of what held me back. And so anyway, um, pushing past that and I have, um, like I said, I've been working towards this goal. Uh, I think I mentioned in my previous video that whenever I started back in July of 2018, um, it was hard for me to just lay on the floor without pain. It, um, I would lay flat on the floor to get ready to try and attempt to do crunches. And it was both kind of like emotionally painful for me as well as physically painful. When I'd lay down, I would lay down on my back, it would hurt and I would have to lay there for a good five or 10 minutes just so that my body would settle. That way I'd be comfortable enough to start doing crunches. And um, my crunches were horrible. I could barely lift my head and my shoulders off of the floor. And, but I knew and I told myself back then that, look, this is the beginning and you'll be able to do better later, but you've got to get up to it. So um, I just want to take that moment to go ahead and remind you guys that if you're not, if you're not already in a fitness journey where you, if you're just kind of starting or if you're restarting or whatever the case and you're going to do a crunch or something like that and you can't do this amazing, wonderful crunch or this amazing push up or whatever the case, um, be patient with yourself and keep working at it because I know how hard it is to fight the impulse to just be like, F it, I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. This is emotionally painful and, um, and physically painful as well. It's just, it's a hard experience for people whenever you, you feel like what you're doing doesn't look like anything. Um, you feel like what you're doing doesn't amount to anything, but it's something that you have to remind yourself. You have to start small. A lot of times you have to just start small, start where you are, no matter where you're at in your health and fitness journey or your life journey. Um, no matter what your goals are, uh, you have, sometimes you just have to start small. Sometimes you have the opportunity to start medium or big, but a lot of times you just have to start small and kind of work your way up to where you're wanting to go. So that being said, um, to get to a point that I was trying to make here, um, whenever I got serious about it, I started, uh, in the living room jogging in place for 15 minutes while I was watching, or at least 15 minutes while I was watching like a show on Netflix or a movie or, or just whatever the case, maybe a YouTube video. I would, um, like I said, lay down flat on the floor, <laughs> suffer for a few minutes until my body got used to laying flat on the floor and then start doing the best crunches that I could do in the moment. Um, I would also, um, uh, I, I struggle to, uh, stand up on steps and, um, to, we, our, our kitchen actually has a little step up and the, the step up is not much, but at the time I worked in food service, uh, and it was very painful for me to just step up from the kitchen into the dining room or from the dining room down into the kitchen. I'd have to grip the, uh, the side of the door frame. Um, also we have three or four steps outside, uh, on our porch going down to the front, like lawn and, um, the, the front yard It's small, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so hopefully I might edit this on I just post it as is. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, um, it was hard for me to go up and down those steps as well. So um, back then, sorry, that's classy, but my nose is running a little bit. And uh, I think I might pause and wipe my nose off real quick. So there's that. And I'm back. So um, nose is wiped, doing all right. So anyway, uh, um, so like I said, back in July 8th, July on July 8th of 2000, 18. That was when I started. And again, um, you know, marching in place for 15 minutes in the living room progressed into, um, um, like walking, uh, walking in the park and doing all this other, we have, a, so we have a few parks in the town that I live in. And one of them is, I think about, I want to say, I want to say it's 2.2 miles on the outside of the city block that the park's attached to. The inside of the park, the little circuit that they've got on the inside of the park is 0.8 miles. And then we have another park that if you were to essentially walk or run the circuit, it's um, about a mile and a half. And they actually have places marked off for a 5K. Um, 
on it, which is, uh, for those of you that don't know, a 5K is 3.1 miles. So anyway, um, I started walking that smaller circuit inside one of the parks that was only 0.8, and I tried to like at least get a little bit of that in. Um, and then I started going to this other park that has a little more like kind of scenic niceness because there's a little, uh, a small little body of water. Um, I don't even know if it actually has a name or not, but anyway, there's a small little body of water and uh, there's just, it's just really peaceful out there. So I started doing that. And then I progressed from walking um, the whole thing and then walking briskly. And then I'd start um, incorporating a little bit of running in that. And let me tell you something, for a lot of you, I know just because I've had conversations with so many people that when you are choosing to go out into public and work out, it can be, it can be really, really um, hard, hard on your psyche because you're thinking that people are looking at you and you're thinking that people are judging you. And let me tell you some, some things that I've experienced with that. Yes, there are some. And I mean some, like very few people that are actually judging you. The reason why I know that is because um, a long time ago, I was riding in the truck with one of my brother's best friends and um, and my brother, I do believe. And there was this guy on, I think it was like he was on a bicycle um, biking out on our kind of main stretch in our town. And he yelled something out at him in the... Um, in the spirit of meanness, really, um, he yelled something along the lines of like, along the lines of like, walk fatty, walk fatty or, or ride your bike fatty, whatever it was. Anyway, um, and it was really shitty of him to do that. And I told him, I'm like, he's actually out there trying to better himself. And you just said that. And I'm like, that was just really mean. Why would you do that to somebody? Like, why would you do that to somebody who's trying to improve themselves? And I'm thinking now that, you know, when that happens to you, it makes you want to run and hide. So simultaneously, I've had things like that yelled at me before in the past for going out and trying to be more healthy and trying to be more fit, trying to be active and trying to do something about the things that you want to change about yourself. And for anybody who's watching this, um, I don't want to shame anybody who's watching this who has done something like that, but I would like to ask you going forward, instead of being that kind of person, try to be a little more encouraging to those people, like thumbs up them or something, because there are things that they're wanting to change about themselves and they're actually being proactive and they're, they're taking action and they're actually doing it. So when you, when you encourage them, they're more likely to think, yeah, somebody's out there rooting for me, a uh, complete stranger's out there rooting for me. Um, but when you, um, when you, when you are to yell at them or whatever the case and taunt them, it actually confirms their fears of being judged and they are, they are, it increases their chances of stopping doing what they're doing. So please don't do, don't, don't, don't taunt them. Don't make fun of them. Um, if, if you're going to say anything at all, encourage them, you know, give them that thumbs up. Be like, yeah, or something like you're getting it or something. Um, and it's that, that even doing that, it's a little bit tricky. Um, the thumbs up's kind of universal, at least here in the United States as, you know, good job, good for you. Um, and thumbs upping them is a great nonverbal way of being encouraging because sometimes if you're being verbally encouraging as you're passing them, they may not understand what you're saying just because you're passing them or they might have, they might have their headphones in or whatever and just know that you're like yelling at them. So they might take it as a taunt anyway. But, um, anyway, I would like to encourage you to be encouraging to them by like thumbs upping them or whatever. I do that to people. I'm like, yeah, or good job or whatever. Um, Anybody who knows me that's watching these videos knows that's kind of the, the kind of person that I am because I want everybody to be their best selves and I think it's fantastic when I go out there and see people doing something about the issues that they have in their life. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, anyway, so that being said, um, I worked my way up from about 15 minutes marching in place in my living room to my highest, my, my own personal best of running seven and a half miles uh, basically nonstop. Um, I stopped, I think, to, I think, put something in my car, literally less than 10 seconds of, like, throwing something in there. Um, but anyway, it was a uh, seven and a half miles straight running, and that was really intense. And it was actually interesting because there were some um, older guys that were 
in the park that I was in. Um, one of them was fishing, and I said hi, you know, almost every time that I passed him whenever I went to that circuit. Um, and at one point, one of his friends, I guess, drove past me, and he had this conversation with me. And it was an interesting conversation because he basically told me that he thinks I'm fine the way I am, which was a nice compliment. But simultaneously, I said, you know, he's like, why are you doing this? I think you're fine the way you are. And I said, I'm doing this for me. You know, I want, I, because I want to run. And I said something at one point, um, I was on my sixth, my sixth, um, lap, <laughs> like I was in my sixth lap, uh, getting ready to go into my seventh and, um, or no, my sixth mile. I'm sorry. I was in my sixth mile going into my seventh. And I mean, I was dragging ass. Like I was going so slow and he's like, he drives up next to me. And he's like, man, you're sure going slow. And I thought in my head, when was the last time that you ran six miles asshole? Because Right. So anyway, um, anyway, so, uh, you know, like ignore the people who are hating on you and, um, do your best. So anyway, um, I'm getting ready to go run now again. I think I may have mentioned it in this recording. I'm not sure, but, um, I'm getting ready to go run for the first time since October 5th, 2021. That is a three month lapse of not running at all, but I've done things in between. So it's not like I'm just like, I sat down and I just completely stopped working out stopped running, stopped doing everything um, for the last three months. I have done weight exercises. I've done a lot of elliptical exercise. I have done treadmill exercise as well. I have just not actually run, not on the treadmill and not outside anywhere. So I'm getting ready to run. So one of the things that I wanted to touch on with this video is to um, <laughs> stretch outside of your comfort zone. And when you do things like that, um, you build yourself. It's really amazing. Not only, you know, when you stretch your comfort zone, you're actually expanding your comfort zone, which is really cool. So that the things that you were kind of afraid to do, you're in that place where it makes it easier to do them. It's like you're expanding that boundary and it's really cool. So I want to encourage you to stretch outside of your comfort zone. And one of the things that I'm doing, I'm doing a couple of things today. One, I'm getting back into running. I'm gonna go run at that park that's kind of nice and scenic. It is freaking cold. The last time that I checked our weather app, it is 34 degrees. So it's what I like to call refrigerator temperatures because um, I used to work in food service. As a lot of you know, I worked in food service for about 15 years. And um, being in food service and being a supervisor in food service, you have to know things about food safety. And uh, at, at the time, the, the parameters have changed a little bit, but at the time, um, from 32 degrees to 40 degrees was um, the temperature safety zone, essentially, the safety zone for food in a refrigerator to slow growth of bacteria in a refrigerator. Anything obviously below 32 degrees is freezing, um, but we're not going to get into that because that's like a totally other little thing. So anyway, I'm sorry this is so long, but so it is 34 degrees as of the last time that I checked my weather app. And it is cold outside and I am going to go try to make myself warm. I'm a little bit apprehensive about going to run right now because I've been a little bit under the weather for the last couple of days. You can probably hear my voice a little bit. Um, so I'm a little concerned. Every time I go and run, I cough and I spit stuff up because I'm asthmatic, but I push past it. Um, you know, like I feel like your phlegm kind of, it works your phlegm out of you. And also it might make your mouth dry and like thicken your saliva a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure about the actual physiology of it all, but anyway, I have issues with like coughing no matter when I run, but specifically because I've been a little bit under the weather, I'm a little bit apprehensive about going to run. So that's one thing that I'm doing, pushing outside of my comfort zone. I have run in cold weather before. It does suck. I feel like the worst thing about running, the worst for me thing about running in cold weather is depending on whether it's windy or not. Um, I ran once when it was icy windy and it felt like I was breathing in stabbing icicles in my lungs and that was hard, but I did it. Um, the other thing that I feel like personally was the hardest, was and is probably the hardest thing about running is my hands get really, really cold. Um, I have a tendency to not, well, it's not a tendency. I just, I don't wear gloves when I go running because I can't find a good glove to wear. Um, I don't know if you've, any of you guys have experienced like a body part sweating, but being freezing cold at the same time and that the sweat actually makes it worse. So like if you've got cold feet, but your feet are sweating in your shoes and then, you know, the sweat itself is wet, it's damp, 
it's moist, <laughs> whatever. And then that cold air hits that wetness and makes your feet even more cold. So it's, yeah, it's rough. So anyway, so I'm, I, I don't know exactly what kind of gloves to do. Um, I actually did buy a pair of gloves recently. I'm not sure where they're at because I throw things around sometimes and, and, and or they get moved and whatever. So if I find those gloves, I mostly bought them so that I could go biking and my hands wouldn't freeze whenever that cold air is hitting my hands. But now I'm thinking about it. I could have totally wore those. I don't know where they're at, so and I'm running out of daylight a little bit. It's getting close to three o'clock in the afternoon right now. So anyway, I wanted to share a couple other things about reaching outside of your comfort zone. So again, running in general, running in the public, it's hard. Um, and <laughs> there are some other things that uh, fat people might understand. Uh, when I run, things bounce around and make noises that I would prefer didn't happen. Um, one of my friends was actually uh, joking with me about that. She's like, well, consider it like your fat rule is actually just cheering you on. Yeah, you go. Good job. All right. And um, it was really funny. But anyway, um, one of the things that I do when I run is I'll wear, or when I work out in general, is I tend to wear a lot of tie-dye just because it's uh, the tie-dye shirts that I have, they're old. If I get a sweat stain, they won't show as much. Um, plus, it's kind of like unique to my own kind of exercise personality. Um, I've got a long sleeve tie-dye shirt that I wear. It's neat because this was, I think this used to be kind of tight on me and now it's pretty loose, which is nice. Um, I recently-ish, last couple months, bought myself this super bright yellow um, hoodie and I'll probably be wearing that as well. Uh, one of the neat things is if I go run and I get into it and I finish that first lap, which is about a mile and a half, by the time I finish that first lap, I am like so hot and so sweaty that I'm ready to take um, take something, uh, one layer off. So I'll probably, I might take this off by the time I finish that first one. I don't know if I'm going to go more than one just because of how cold it is, but I'm going to really try to push through. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to pushing past your comfort zone is I don't like leggings because they are extremely form-fitting and I am, when it comes to style, and um, dressing myself. I'm really conservative. I don't like showing off a lot of skin and I don't like showing off a lot of curves because I have a lot of curves. I'm, you know, all kinds of like lumpy, maybe not lumpy, that's probably not the right word, but um, to use an actual scientific term, and this is a real scientific term, it stuck with me since biology back when I was like a sophomore in high school, globular. I feel like I'm pretty globular. So anyway, <laughs> I have just a lot of um, extra curves that I don't care for, which is the whole point of um, me. One of the points of me working out and everything is because if I feel like if there's something that you don't like about your body and it's reasonable, um, take, take steps to change it. If it's something that you feel like you want to change. So anyway, um, so that being said, again, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a I don't like leggings, but I've got a cool parent at the daycare that I work for that sells Google Row stuff, and I bought myself two pairs of leggings. This is one of them. Um, the other one's kind of a bluish one with some print. Not much print person, but I thought they were kind of cute. So anyway, so these are the leggings that I'm going to put on. Um, I have been using these sweatpants for about a year and a half to two years now. Probably two years now that I think about it. So these gray ones, they're drawstring sweatpants. And also these um, kind of plum purpley colored drawstring sweatpants as well. And I'm going to put those on in a minute. So as you can see, there's a lot of looseness here and there. Um, and one of the reasons why I went ahead and got the leggings is because when I'm running, I really don't like having to pull up my pants constantly. And part of that is um, as they come down, my thighs chafe. If they hit each other, they're chafing. It's just not a happy practice. So um, anyway, um, so I was like, well, you know, maybe the next step in this is to go ahead and push myself past my comfort zone and get a pair of leggings and like an actual actual athletic leggings and um, see if that works better because um, hopefully because of the fact that they absolutely hug, they'll stay up where they need to be and because they kind of cling to you, they'll stay where they need to be so that my thighs won't rub together and hurt. Um, so that's that. So anyway, again, these are my uh, drawstring 
sweatpants um, that I've been wearing for a really long time. These are one of them. I'm gonna change into the other ones to show you that. Um, these are the other ones. Um, these are actually longer, I like them. I've gotten to the point where I've actually taken my sweatpants and I pull them up pretty high over what I call my upper fat roll. <laughs> just, it is what it is. Some of you chonkers like me understand what I'm saying. Um, and then I like pull it tight and then I tie it and then I hope that it doesn't fall down while I'm running. But um, there's just, when I pull it up like that, there's not like a ton of room, but like when they get down to a certain point, they're just really baggy and um, it's irritating. So there's that. And I hope you liked my Snorlax slippers. So I will put on the leggings and see how they feel. And just to say something about it, my friend cut my hair the other day. It looks pretty good. Just pumped because it's not like huge anymore. Uh, this madness is whatever, but but anyway, um, so that's, there's that. So I went ahead and put on these leggings. Um, this is what they look like. I'm not sure how I feel about them because like I said, it makes me feel a little awkward that, that they're like clinging to me and showing like every single curve. Um, simultaneously, they are kind of like softening those curves so that they're not so curvy, I guess. But anyway, um, it's different. And I'm really hoping that, um, that I can try to be comfortable in them. Um, uh, I, I feel like it's one of those things where uh, my best friend, Ashley, I was talking with her last night and I told her a little bit about it. And she's like, well, are they comfortable for you? And I said, well, Physically they are, but mentally they're not. And she's like, that's fair. Okay, so anyway, um, so these, I'm a little concerned that they're going to be freezing cold too, but I'm really pumped that they have these great pockets that come down like all the way to here. Um, one of the things that I was concerned about and talked to with the mom who sold them to me um, is that I need pockets because whenever I do, whenever I, whenever I work out, I like to listen to music through my phone and um, also that I like to hold my inhaler and my lip balm. I have my inhaler and my lip balm in one pocket, my phone in the other pocket, and it looks like it's going to fit perfect. So she'll let me try on a pair. Um, as you can see, they're not completely comfortable for me just because I'm just so not used to wearing leggings. Um, I know I'm totally awkward right now, but it just, they're, they're different. So anyway, um, we'll see how it goes. I'm a little concerned, but again, they are actual athletic leggings. And again, um, wanted to talk about stepping outside of your comfort zone. So that's what I'm doing today. And uh, anyway, so these are, if any of you are interested, um, they're called Brave. Here are some of the stats. About as steady as I can here. That way maybe you can see. I'm not sure if you can actually see um, and read it okay because it looks kind of blurry from my angle. But it is what it is there. Um, this is fun. It says rise now together, always and forever. And it's got a one X at the bottom because that is the size that I'm wearing. Um, here's a little symbol, I guess. I don't know which way it's supposed to go, but that is whatever. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so like I said, um, not honestly not completely comfortable for me, but leggings are super in right now. So there are probably a lot of you out there that actually like wearing leggings. Awesome. Um, so I will uh, continue touch myself and hit myself awkwardly and uh <laughs> and then I'm gonna go run um fat Jester says hi he's a big fat boy he's got a big old belly mm -hmm. um so there's that uh I'm surprised he's not meowing at me because he tends to tell me all about it it's probably because it's video and he likes to be on video I really don't know but anyway this is fat Jester um He's a big boy. Uh, but anyway, um, so I guess without further ado, I'm going to go put my shoes on and run. Um, yeah, again, <laughs> I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. We'll see how it goes. Um, right now, they're not very comfortable, uh, both physically and a lot mentally, just because I don't know, I'm just not used to all this clinginess. Um, but again, I'll try it out and see how it works. Uh, and I guess I'll let you know. Um, also we got the editing equipment going, so hopefully I can edit this and give you better than just this random talk that I've got going on right now. So, um, yeah. 
Oh, but one of, one of my selling points I felt like with um, these leggings was that whenever she gave me the pair to try on, um, like I said, I'm going to be messing with these. This is going to be great. Um, I liked the way my butt looked in them because, you know, it accentuated that booty. So <laughs> there's that. Um, I don't know. I'm probably like super awkward right now, but I am actually extremely awkward right now. So um, we're going to call it good at this point and I'm going to get ready to go and I'm going to try wearing these new leggings. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. Um, and they'll be good. Uh, if, if I end up freezing my hiney off, I will probably, well, I have to finish the run anyway. I've got to finish at least one lap to get back to my, uh, vehicle. So that'll be a thing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if I end up freezing, I might not wear them again until it gets warmer. We'll see. But anyway, like I said, this is one of two pairs that I've gotten. They look nice. Um, they feel weird for me. Again, I'm not a leggings person. I'm usually kind of a baggy, like just relaxed, whatever kind of person. So anyway, this shirt, by the way, smells super good. Cause like I spray it with my body spray and it smells really, really good. Or I'll spray the shirt that I'm wearing on under it with it before I put it on. And yeah, it smells so good. So anyway, um, that's, yeah, so that's that. And I am going to get ready to head out Hopefully I'll do okay and not cough my brains out while I'm going and um, hopefully I can make it around one and then I can be able to log my my yes fit um, miles into that um, account that I did. So I hope that I mentioned that in this recording. At this point, I really don't remember, but <laughs> I will talk to you all later. Have an excellent day. Have an excellent week. Um, stretch yourself past your comfort zone. Get started. Start small if you have to or if you've been doing it for a while. Um, I encourage you to get back into it if you've kind of let yourself get out of it. Wild hair. Ooh. Um, and I will talk to you later. Uh, do your best. Be your best self. All right. Bye.